Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and today our expert trainer will be discussing about Azure DNS. So let's get into the video and watch the video till the end. Azure DNS, full form of DNS is guys, I think it will be domain name server. Now what it will help us to do, it basically help us to translate a IP address to a name which is called as forward lookup zone and name to a IP address which is called as reverse zone. Right? Forward lookup zone and reverse lookup zone. But in order to understand this Azure DNS service itself, why it comes into the existence and where exactly Azure is providing its service, we need to first understand how DNS basically works. Alright? Not going to get in too much in detail. But we need to understand how a DNS basically works in its entirety. That's what we are trying to understand. So in order to understand that, we will create a scenario where, just think about this. This is our laptop, right? And here one person is trying to access a website called as www google.com all right it can be any other website but here he's trying to access google.com as of now we will take it as wherever we will go they don't have any records of google.com this is how we are going to take it as in order to understand it all right now as soon as he will try to access google.com in his browser and he will hit, hit, hit enter so what will happen in our system in our local system we have a file called as host file, right? It will keep the records of those websites which we have accessed frequently, right? Or you can also mention some website name and it's whatever the IP address to which you want it to get resolved. Now in this host file, it is not able to find out the entry for google.com. Then what it will do, it will go to the local dns cache so you need to understand this in in the in this manner that this particular system from which you are trying to access this is a system that is being provided by your organization in your organization if a system is being provided then that organization will have its private network it will have its own dns servers and this particular system from which you are trying to access internet which is google.com as an example in this scenario that private DNS servers of that private network will also have some entries if someone would have already tried to access google.com. So as of now, there will be local DNS cache on those servers. Local DNS cache. So here also it is not able to find out that records, whichever records that it is looking actually looking into it. Now what it will do? It will actually go to that local DNS server and it will try to check local DNS server of your of your company and it will try to check do you have any records for google.com. This local DNS server also doesn't have the record of google DNS uh, google google.com. Now what exactly will happen that this is the next step. Now it is not able to find out google.com the entries for google.com where it has to go inside their private network. Now this local DNS server will go ahead and try to communicate with internet service provider DNS server. So internet service, the, the, uh, the people who are providing us internet, the internet service providers, they also have, they also maintain their own DNS server. So they will look into their internet service providers DNS server. Now this internet service provider DNS servers also says that boss, I don't know what is this google.com. Let me talk to my boss and let me check how we will be able to find out the records. Here in, in the world of DNS, there are servers, though they are called as dot or you can call it as forward slash. We also call it as root servers. Now, what these root servers will have basically, these root servers will host top level domains. Okay. What are these top level domains? So these top level domains can be .com, .gov, .org, .edu like that, right? 
lot of top level domains are available top level domains so this internet service provider will go to root server in its region and will ask boss i am looking out for www.google.com now this root server will tell that i don't know what is www what is google but i know what is and who is .com so i can route you to .com now this .com for the first time this internet service provider dns server will get a response back from .com servers that okay this .com okay this google you are looking out for right this google is basically is hosted on godaddy.com servers godaddy.com name servers so for the first time it actually got a response back so for the first time it got a response back so you need to go and check with there are a lot of dns registrars that are available godaddy.com is one of those dns registrar from where you can go ahead and buy a domain and also manage that specific domain entries right and we call them as dns registrar go daddy.com so now you go to godaddy.com and check so when i am saying go go to godaddy.com it doesn't have to go to godaddy.com server itself it has to go to a special server that godaddy.com basically host those servers are called as what name servers right so they are called as name servers so there are multiple servers that godaddy.com will host so this internet service provider will go to that godaddy.com name servers name servers and will tell that i have found out that you host .com .com websites now i want i am looking out for google.com so what this name server will start what what this uh, in this name servers they will start looking for records and they'll be able to find out okay there is a record for google and to some specific ip address this is what it is pointing to now it will get a response back like this from here then it will get a response back like this then like this it will keep on getting updated so that next time at the host file level itself it will stop it will not go ahead to to the complete circle circle around so that is the reason why whenever we will access a website initially it takes some time but when the next time we will try to access it takes relatively very less time right so now once we got to know that okay google.com is hosted on 1.1.1.1 then we can directly communicate with that 1.1.1.1 server and it will give a response back and you will be able to see google.com here on the server now let's try to understand where azure dns comes into the picture right this is how dns works now where are the records kept records are kept in something called as name servers right name servers are the actual place where your records are kept so azure is saying that rather than keeping your records on godaddy.com servers you can use my name server so azure dns basically provides their own name servers so this is azure you can also write it as name servers so it will provide you four name servers so what you can do and you can manage this azure dns you don't have to log into godaddy.com portal in order to manage your dns you can manage azure dns directly from your azure portal all right and how exactly it can be done so what will happen basically if you want to create let's say you want to create a record for let's say you have bought a domain called as abc.com right abc.com now you want to create a record for abc.com so whenever someone will access abc.com i want them to be routed to let's say 10.168. some 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 whatever website or it will be basically a public website so it will be let's say 4.16. something something right so to add this a record we call it as a record so there are multiple kinds of records one of which is called as a record where we will convert uh, a website to a ip address that is what is a record is called now in order to create this a record you have to log into godaddy.com then you have to go to dns management of that godaddy.com and then you have to update it but if you are using azure dns at the same point of time you can log into azure portal 
go go to azure dns find out your uh, domain and update your records under azure dns itself how it can be done let me just show it to you or we also call it as dns zone by the way azure dns basically is dns zone that is what we will call it as we will click on create i'll give a name so let's say for an example i am typing tcs.com right i am typing tcs.com and i am going to create it under test rg as of now now let's see now uh, can you guys just try to answer one of my question i have written tcs.com and it has actually created a dns zone for me uh, for me for tcs.com so these are the name servers that azure has provided us right until this point of time the records were being kept inside these name servers which is being owned by godaddy.com right and godaddy.com is the dns registrar from where you have bought tcs.com so you need to tell godaddy.com boss we are not going to use your name servers now i am going to use azure name servers is it making sense to everyone so what we need to do we need to go to godaddy.com dns management and we need to create a special kind of record which is called as ns record and how you can do that you can simply go to record set on dns management select here as name server record give the name server name so this this is one of the name server right i am just showing it to you here what you have to do there because i don't own any domain as of now so this is what and this dot is if you guys can see at last there is a dot right this is a very important dot you should not miss when you will create an ns record so this complete name including the dot that is at last has to be there then only it will be a valid ns record that you will create under dns management of your domain registrar and as soon as this will get updated it will take i think if i am not wrong 2 to 3 hours to get update and start reflecting so once that is done then you can manage your tcs.com from dns zone azure dns zone itself so you don't have to go to godaddy.com now you can manage your dns records for tcs.com domain right directly through the azure portal are we clear on this so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if in case you missed upon anything or if you could not understand anything from what our trainers explained then we have something really special for you we have our free class on microsoft azure admin certification for beginners along with some question and answers and in this class you'll be learning about who should learn azure cloud and why we'll be learning about azure certification roadmap for beginners and a lot of demos and about azure core services more than 30 plus hands on labs and what not and if you want to register for this free class then you just have to log on to k21academy.com forward slash az10402 so just now let me just give you a demo for the same all right so what you have to do is just open your browser and type k21academy.com forward slash az10402 after that you'll be seeing a page like this you just have to click on book your seat now and after that just select an event date when you're available add your name add your email address add your phone number and click on yes save my seat now moving ahead you'll be seeing this kind of link on the extreme right just save that link add it to your calendars and i'll see you in this class till then take care and keep learning